Hello, King's Only. In 10. Thank you. Bye. 10. King's College Hospital, London. A major trauma centre. Have you got a blood pressure yet? She was on the floor and I thought she's dead. And one of the busiest A&E departments in the world. Stabbing, code red. King's is everything. Everything pals in through that door. The fire has been trapped between him and the bridge. A place where love... Can I wait here until she comes home? Can I come home with her? Life. Oh, apart from having a brain injury, never better. What happened? I got bitten. By who? By me mate. <laughs> and loss unfold every single day. I've not got a happy feeling of you. No. Not breathing. Stop. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department in just one 24-hour period. You're going to be all right. You know what happens when things are bad? Uh, Daddy's here. Please don't cry. The moment that you're in recess and you're really sick and all you can think about is, am I going to live, am I going to die? Silly things go out the window. And ultimately, what's important is realised that you're loved and that you're not alone. Looks like it's you, and it looks like it's me. Oh, you're kidding me. I'll go. Kings, Jackie speaking. It's a ring like no other phone that I've heard. It will stay with me forever. Because <laughs> it never stops. Oh, good. Thanks. Bye. Wrong number. Oh, sorry. Wrong number. Good. Bye. Consultant Jackie moved from Australia three years ago to work at King's. Today, she's in charge of the emergency department. What? Tell me, tell me all. So, in bed one, no one. Bed two, gentlemen. I remember going through the want to be a teacher and a hairdresser and a nurse and all that sort of stuff. And then I just remember thinking, you know what? Why don't I be a doctor? Just pop your hands across your chest for us there, mate. OK. Yeah. Good idea. Aren't I lucky that I got that decision right at the great old age of 14 or something? Lovely. So on roll, we'll roll to 90 and then we'll start. Cool. So ready, steady, roll. I think of all the other things I liked when I was 14. Hello. <laughs> I think medicine seems to be the standout shining star of decision making as a teenager. So this is this is a young guy, push bike, 35 miles per hour, down a hill, push, push cyclist. Okay. Jackie's only patient in recess is 32-year-old graphic designer, Alan. I've tried contacting your mum. It went to answer phone, so I presume police have probably already contacted her and she's on her way. Oh, right, OK. Now, these trousers, are we OK to cut them off? You can. I've got no underwear, underwear on, but there you go. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Jen? Apparently donuts aren't until tomorrow or the next day. Is it a busy day or is it a quiet day today? Don't say that word. It is a queue day. Yeah, I was going to say, it does seem quite quiet in here. You keep saying it and it's going to kick off with a vengeance and it will all be your fault now. Well, the quieter it gets, and you're not allowed to say the Q word, of course, the quieter it gets, it's more the expectation that the next thing that happens is just going to be that much bigger. Yeah, you don't know when it, when it hits. That's the joy of A&E. 
stroke now, so she knows to come and get me. King ZB, Jackie speaking. Ooh. All right. Six minutes. And do you know if the crew's given him anything for the hypoglycemia? Presumably they have. Do you want to put out a paediatric yes, red phone? Oh, yeah. Paediatric red phone, six minutes. Paediatric red phone, six minutes. A severely underweight baby is being brought to recess with breathing difficulties. Three and a half months is, I think, for me, anyway, a scary kind of age. feel anxious of what can be going on with a three and a half month old who's sick enough to call it in as a red phone. Um, this is a three month old Josiah. Um, he's got a BM of 1.5, he's got a temperature of 35.9. Last, he last fed by breast this morning um, at 0, 0600 hours, um, but mum said that he, he's really not feeding well and hasn't been for a few days. Thank you. Hello, darling. Do you want to try and get some access for us, please? And do we get any blood? So we haven't had bloods out yet. And we've got the glucose. Okay. Where's that? Hud where's that oxygen? Nice. I think I knew instantaneously that he was desperately unwell. And I didn't immediately know what was wrong. Ah. IV glucose, yes please. How yeah, how much do we do? Yeah. Two per kilo. We're doing it two per kilo, do we say? Or five per kilo? Well, let's just, just two, two per kilo. Two per kilo. Yeah. Saying the weight is 6.2 kilos, are we happy with that? Yeah. Mum says he's about eight pounds. You're looking at lots of different little things that might be clues because obviously the three and a half month old baby can tell you nothing so you're just looking for anything that'll point you in the right direction and so it's had the two per kilo of 10 percent dextrose yeah. 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 okay oxygen sats coming up we've got blood pressure no, it's got... Josiah urgently needs glucose to stop his body shutting down. Right, Mum, you come over here where he can see you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Another 10 mils. Yeah. So he's sick at the moment, which is why there's lots and lots of people around the bed, but we're doing all the right things to try and sort that out. And I just felt helpless to know that something was wrong with him. I, the one person that's meant to be there for him all the time, I couldn't do nothing to help him. It wasn't a very good feeling at all. I was worried that he was sick enough that he might die. two hours in resus, cyclist Alan has been told he can go home. But he's still waiting to hear from his mum. He uses the bike to cycle around London, which I must admit, I've always had concerns about that because of the traffic. As a child, he wasn't really into cycling very much at all. But since he's been back from Australia, he seems to be very keen to keep fit. Do I press nine? Nine, yeah. Nine. Yeah, and then, yeah, okay. 
Oh, hi, it's me. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you got messages this morning or not. Um, I'm just calling from the hospital. Um, I'm OK, I'm fine. Um, I've just got a broken finger. Bye. Can I just get through? Uh, I can't get a hold of anyone at the moment, so I can't get hold of my mum. So I don't know whether she's got the message or what. I had left my mobile at home, but I thought, well, no one really rings. And of course, this day, I really did need it. I felt very guilty. The one time I should have been really with him in hospital, I wasn't. And I just felt I let him down. As a mother, do you ever stop worrying? Never. Can I please have a porter to peds? That's a porter to peds. Thank you. Isn't he? Okay, so I'm clicking his eyes shut. We can all go to sleep. 18 month old Charlie has been brought in by his mum, dad, and grandma. Ker Kerry and Matthew are all right, yes, yes, yes. And she's really been she's very poorly, so. Uh, well, so we're sitting here at the moment with him with his nappy off and hovering with a little tube because we're supposed to be trying to collect a urine specimen, but he's not weeing, so. <laughs> um, still no wee wee. No wee wee. Will you really watch? Yeah. Can I just feel his tummy? <laughs> is it me or has it got a bit bigger? <laughs> bigger? <laughs> what? Since he's come here? No, it's just. It's Lately? Just, yes. Yeah, I thought that the other day. <laughs> it has. It, no, it has. But he's got longer, generally. Oh, yes, sir. What? I think it was just no. It, we thought it might be wee, but I think I just spilt some of the syringe. I've realised I haven't told nursery he's not coming in again today. Uh, should I phone him? Yeah, get in, just sort of say. I don't keep know, what am I saying? Just saying... He's not very well. Um, keep him off. Yeah. From quite a young age, I've wanted children. Probably about eight or nine or so. Um, which is why we wanted Charlie so much. Um, and it was quite hard when we couldn't... couldn't get pregnant for quite a while, to be honest. Please feel the little Willie. Willie. Don't touch my Willie! <laughs> We'd had a miscarriage before, so it, I think it was definitely um, quite tense. Yeah. So the day that I found out I was pregnant and just the, the joy of it, and then you spend the next eight weeks kind of living in fear of will it work or, or will it not? And I always at the back of my mind sort of said it wouldn't be until I had Charlie in my arms that I would feel relaxed and more comfortable. Teddy needs a wee-wee. Teddy needs a wee-wee. Okay. Okay. So we've got some access. Yeah. And we've got the glucose. OK. It's got a big liver. He's got some mass there. He's putting on a mass here. I don't know where they're I think it's liver. You think it's the liver? Yeah. OK. When I felt his tummy, he had a really big liver. And that's really abnormal in, um, you know, a little baby. And it was very big, and that immediately made me think, is it something cardiac? So does he, is he actually in heart failure and his heart's not pumping enough and his heart's failing and that's why 
he's presenting in this way. Jackie's called the paediatric intensive care team to resus. Are you in? Basically here, baby is, as you see, lethargic, BM of 1.5. Basically our BM lows, just having some glucose now. Cried and seems to look at mum when we put the oxygen mask on, but stats on arrival, 79%. It's got a big liver, not obviously creps in the chest, certainly working hard, hypoxic with stats of 79 on room air. I just saw like hundreds of doctors just around him, like machines everywhere. That's when I thought, okay, something's really wrong here. Like this could be a matter of life and death here. 19-year-old mum Kanita has been joined by Josiah's dad, Torin. He's got quite a big liver, which sometimes can mean in little babies that their heart's not working properly, OK? We know that he's actually really sick at the moment, and he's working very, very hard to breathe. You can see that he's sucking all the muscles in in his chest to try and breathe, and he's still not getting enough oxygen in. Doctors, the way they was rushing around, I knew like, something was wrong. They was just, like, poking him everywhere, like, checking everything on him. I was actually a bit angry at first. I was thinking, like, that's my little baby. Like, what the hell are you doing to him? Like, I just wanted to, then, to tell them to stop, leave him alone, like, he's fine. But obviously, I knew he wasn't fine. The way the doctors were so worried about him. OK, I've got access here. Can we get the glucagon here, please? Uh, but we need some blood. I, I don't know what to do with myself. Obviously, I wanted to just pick him up and tell him everything was going to be OK. But at the same time, I had to let the doctors do what they were doing to try and help him. <coughs> you know, he was probably scared, thinking, where's my mum? Like, what's happening? Where is she? What's going on? OK. Are you OK, mum? sure? Some gauze squares, please. People just don't like seeing sick kids, and especially if it goes badly, then I think it always is more distressing if, if there's a bad outcome with a child. I had one little boy. He was really sick with us in resource for ages, and then he went to the intensive care unit, and he'd kind of improved a little bit, and the paediatric sister who was on, who went up to the unit, she just kind of, you know, grabbed my arm and just went, he died. And I, I was like, who died? Like, what are you talking about? And she said, the little baby. It was very upsetting. Really, really upsetting. The team needs to keep Josiah's blood sugar level up and regulate his breathing. Being so young, obviously, I know that people probably had the stereotype, like, oh, yeah, she's not going to look after her child well. Are they going to blame me? Like, was it actually my fault? That's all the thoughts that are running through my head. Like, could I have done something? Is it my fault he's in this position in the first place? He's not allergic to anything that you know of. I'm guessing he hasn't ever had antibiotics or anything like that. No. OK. He's crying really well over there, which is good. OK, that's a good sign that he's, you know, awake enough that he's upset at all the mean things that we're doing to him at the moment, so that's good. I, I think the families kind of appreciate that you are showing some level of understanding for how they're feeling and what a difficult situation it is. I don't think it's ideal to be blubbering, but, <laughs> you know, I, you can only control your emotions so much and if you're sort of having to blink the tears away, then you know, it's, I can't help it, and it's just because I really feel for them. It's a sign of humanity, and I think that that's key to our job. If you don't have that, then I don't think you're going to be a very good doctor of any sort, really. So, hmm.
finishing his college. It's fine. I, I only had one stitch. It's all right. No, 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 it didn't even go in at all. It didn't go in at all, Mum. It was just scratching the skin. I think his mouth's a bit... His lips are a bit moister, actually. Mum, Dad and Grandma are still waiting for a urine sample from 18-month-old Charlie. I think part of this is he just feels thoroughly pissed off now, Frank. Yes. You know, he's fed up with being ill, he's fed yes. up with being poked, and... <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> that was, there wasn't much warning, was there? No. I've caught a drop or two. Well done, Joe. <laughs> there wasn't actually very Well, there's, much, there's there. quite a bit on the oh. floor. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm there. <laughs> Oh, that's all I managed to catch. <laughs> oh, Charlie, you caught us unawares, you did. That's hilarious. Poor Porter's already been here once. <laughs> now, let me just wash my hands. Oh, Mummy and Grandma missed it. Very silly. I'm giving your balloon a smile. Oh, that's so cute. Oh. So we're giving him the sugar to bring his sugar back up. We're giving him some fluids to help his heart work. We're giving him some antibiotics in case this is infection. But now we know that he's really sick, and so what we need to do is try and ease up the work for him and things. So we're going to put him to sleep and put him on a breathing machine. And then if we need to give him other medications to support him, then we can do that, and he's going to go to the intensive care unit. Josiah is being prepared to be moved to intensive care. Morphine and midazolam infusions, infusions. for a four kilo baby. Okay. Actually, 3.7 kilo baby. These little matter, mills matter. Exactly. When, when his liver's that big, exactly. the mills matter. I was planning to go uni. I had all my uni stuff ready in place. Then I found out I was pregnant. I told my boyfriend. I think he was just shocked. But then he just agreed. So all my plans had to change and get ready to start being a mum. Instead, if you need to. Okay, do you have beds upstairs today? Well. I will make a bed. Yeah. But what can I do? I can't send away. I will make a bed. My mum was thinking, you're too young. Like, she didn't think I was ready for it. She didn't think I'd be able to cope with it. She didn't want me to mess up going to uni and all that stuff. And I think she was shocked when I first told her what I wanted to do, because obviously she knew my plans, what I wanted to do. But once I told her, I guess she just had to respect my decision and just continue supporting me along the way. Yes, she did. Do you want to do you want to come up and hold his hand while we have a look at him, just before, while we're getting everything ready? You can come too if you want. I'm just going to get. I'm just going to get Mum, okay. while, the while they're sorting themselves out, I'm just going to get Mum to come up. And, yes. yeah. You can come around to the head of the bed there. That's it. Like he already had changed my life so much. I couldn't imagine going back. Not at all. Can someone come and hold this leg for me? Hold Sorry, Jen. Sorry, little Zaya. That's fine. Oh, oh. Do you want me to hold it? Oh, okay. okay. I think really from the moment you find out that you're pregnant, you're a parent, your life changes, especially as a woman, you're responsible. It's about your child. Car. Oh. I know, I know. 
you know, you hate the thought of that person being sad or in pain. Thank you very much. Yeah, you care more about that person than, than anyone, really. Josiah needs an emergency operation on his heart. I'm just, I'm just thinking the state of my kitchen right now. <laughs> <coughs> Literally, last night's dinner, I haven't even, I didn't even scrape the plates last Chill. night. It's really bad. Do you want anything? Do you want to try and go to the toilet? No, would you? Wait till I've got the walls. 81 year old Ronald has been brought in by his daughter Tracy. He has a suspected stroke that has affected his speech. It's where it used to be all out of it. It's just a little one. But when I've prepared, it's, it's all out. Of it. Hi, hi, Ronald. Um, my name's Ndaba. I'm one of the uh, stroke registrars. Oh. And, hello. Uh, you're Ronald's daughter. Hi. Yeah. And what's your name? Tracy. Tracy. Brilliant. Okay. I've heard a, I've heard a little bit of the story, mm -hmm. um, but do you mind sort of just giving me a, a summary of what's brought what, what's brought you in? Oh, well, I'll start feeling the thing flashes and oh no, it, it, Fuzzy. Isn't it? Fuzzy. Fuzzy and fuzzy. fuzzy. Yeah. Someone has a stroke. They know exactly what they want to say. Um, it just can't come out. The front end of, of getting the words out is, you know, cut off. So it's almost like they've literally just been gagged. He was trying to talk to me and he, and he couldn't. And, and obviously then he got upset. And I think as he was getting more and more upset, it was even harder. So initially there were no words at all? No. OK. And then as things settled down, after a few minutes, some words were coming out. Yes. But still a little bit A, a little bit jumbled. stuttery. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of knew what he was saying. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as if it was gobbledygook. Sure. Do you think things got better and then worse again? Yeah. Or do you think things yeah. have stayed the same, pretty much? Yes. Yeah, it's stayed, stayed the same <clears throat> since yesterday. So Someone has a stroke. It's quite, quite often difficult for family members and people around to see the extent of what's going on. Uh, because you don't see a lot of blood on the outside, what's going on is going on internally. Has anyone in the family ever had trouble with strokes or mini strokes? Or anything like no, I mean, Dad was one of 12, and to be quite honest, it's, all, sure. it's been cancer on every single one, so, and okay. they've all, unfortunately, gone early. Um, so they've never, basically they've never reached Dad's age. Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, Dad's okay. was the baby and they've okay. never reached Dad's age. Okay. All right. Um, I'll just come around that end and, um, and just examine you. That's all right. Can we um, whip the glasses off for a second? Is that, is that okay? Excellent. Okay, just look at my finger. Just follow my finger with your eyes, one side to the other. Okay. All right. Perfect. Look straight at me. Well done. Show me your teeth. Big smile. Big smile. Excellent. Raise your eyebrows for me. All the way up. Perfect. You can pop your glasses back on if you want. <clears throat> what would you call this, Ronald? Pain. And what is that used for? Writing. And what's this you've got? Tire. Oh, no, watch. What's, what's, what's the name of that? Watch. And what's that used for? Time. OK, all right. Can you say hippopotamus for me? It's a botamus. Hippopotamus. It's a botamus. OK, can you say British Constitution? British Constitution. British Constitution. British Constitution. OK, all right, fine. We're going to take you around for a scan um, of your head. 
Um, so I think they, they might be ready soon, so we'll, we'll, we'll go around. Um, and then when we come back, I'll um, take you through everything and, and, and tell you what's happening next. Can you set up properly? Okay. You have to set up properly, Mummy said. No more hyping about contact lens. He was in tears earlier, resorted to crying. <laughs> what I should have done, I should have let you go to hospital on your own. That's like neglect. Kind it's of. not neglect. <laughs> You're 18, you neglected your eyes. <laughs> Yep. Can I come in or? Yep. Yep. Have you been? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't... Have you been? <laughs> oh, do you feel better now? Yeah. Feel better, you've been to the toilet. You're all lopsided. <laughs> and Darba thinks the left side of Ronald's brain has been affected. A scan is needed to confirm this. Oh, right. they're, they're ready for us now, Ronald. Yep. You're going to go for your scan? And when the strokes happen, um, you know, the people that have had the strokes suddenly um, need help. What we see a lot of is, you know, their children coming in and, and be the, the parent in, in, in a sense. Okay, so you'll need to move up so that your head's towards, well, in the headrest. Hiya, Warren. Hello. Hiya. Um, they've just taken them off for a CT scan. So, yeah. Obviously, I'm going to stay as, as long as I can, um, and then I'll, I'll make my way home. No, I'm, I'm all right, as long as I keep it down. He's got some dysarthria and he's, um, he's got expressive dysphasia as well. Plus his NIH is quite low, actually. it's only two, it's just speech, there's nothing else. Most people get decades to make that transition, you know, um, but with a stroke, literally happens overnight sometimes and they've suddenly got to switch from being the child who was listening and taking things on board from the parent to the one who's saying, okay, I have to be in charge now. I'm just in a bit of a daze, to be honest. If, if he does come out today, can I bring him home just for a day? I don't want him on his own. Could I? Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name's Laura, I'm one of the nurses. What's brought you here tonight? We were out at a night out. We were obviously dressed as cheerleaders, as you can tell. There was a whole thing where we tried to do a bit of a prep, which is just a normal stunt, and I fell over. You didn't fall. I did fell. I fell out you, of the prep. You didn't get to the prep level. Well, we tried to get to a prep level, and I fell. So we probably fell you, from about this far off the ground. It literally didn't get anywhere. No, I'm sure it didn't get anywhere. It's not a problem. It's just that that's how we fell. Um, when you fell over and hit your head, did you pass out at all? 
I don't think so, no. No, I was with her the whole time. So. She didn't pass out. She drank lots it of water. We kept her talking. Does your neck hurt at all? Not at all, no. Right, I'm just going to shine a light in your eye. You can just look at my finger for me, OK? I'm just checking that they react the same, which they do. So that's, that's lovely. Good. That's a good thing. Um, have you taken any drugs apart from alcohol tonight? No, no. I've got blood all over my chin and uniform. <laughs> and mine. I have your blood on my chin and uniform. We're going to have to wash these. <laughs> Not Do you cool. want to come through to yes, mine? Yes, sorry. Is it all right if I go with her? Yeah, yeah. Um, wash them in cold water. If you wash them in hot water, <laughs> blood will stick and you'll never yeah. get oh, it out. Thank you. we have always been told to put salt on it for some reason. Yeah, when it's wet. Yeah, when it's wet, yeah. it still sucks it up. <laughs> yeah, just cold soaking aerial or something, I'll get it out. I can't even remember the last time I was in like an emergency. I've never been. This is my first time. Are you one of those kids? On my 19th birthday. <laughs> Ailey. I rollerbladed into a plant pot when I was about 12, and it fell on me, and I was sort of stuck underneath <laughs> it. I came then, and I broke my wrist. I bro I've broken my wrist so many times. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. It's like prone to breaking now. Oh, for sure. I haven't broken anything, like touch wood. <laughs> Just nothing yet. Emily was celebrating her birthday when someone at the party cut his hand. She's waiting with her friend Amber to see if he's OK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. He's going for an x-ray. Oh, Charlie's going for... Oh! Peace out, Charlie. <laughs> Joy! Checking he's broken something. No, I love I the fact I he's think, got his cap on. I literally think they're just checking that there's nothing in the cup. Where are all the fake doctors, though? <laughs> Emily and I are absolute opposites. Never would have thought that we'd be friends. And actually, from day one, we got on really, really well. <gasps> Do doctors wear, like, the long lab coats? We're both single at the moment. I think she's looking... God, I don't know. I think as simple as the fact that she's so much taller than me, I think we're looking for really different things. <laughs> I feel like we should sneak into nurses' outfits and go and see if Charlie's <laughs> taller. <laughs> His speech is, is there, but he's very, he's stuttery and, and, oh, they're coming back now, I've got to go. I've got to go, Mum. All right, then. Bye. Bye. I'm back. <laughs> that was your ex-wife. <laughs> go on, what's the verdict? So there, there is evidence of, of a stroke on the scan. OK. Yeah, um, but, but there is a risk of another one following. Right. But we like to monitor people in, in, you know, in the first 24 hours, particularly. It's a crucial stage. So um, what that means is we'll need to keep you tonight. So you'll, you'll need okay. to, to stay right. with us. And that's not a problem, because I'll stay here as long as I can until they kick me out. And, and, and so with the level of stroke that you can see, yeah. as it were, do you think that we can get the speech back to...? I think so. I think there's a good chance of improvement here. You know, there's a little bit of work ahead. Um, uh, but, but I think we can get there. When someone's had a stroke, it can be quite frightening. The whole um, event is quite overwhelming. I, I always try to make sure that I am quite careful, you know, with, with giving information, because I have been on the other side where I've, I've had to receive information about, about a relative and a parent specifically. To, yeah. Just to make you aware, obviously, Dad does, doesn't... He lives on his own. Sure. And I'm 50 minutes away, yeah. basically. Yeah. But, you know, whatever happens, whatever the outcome is tomorrow, or whenever Dad comes out, I okay. will, he would come home with me. OK. Well, that's, that's you know, useful to know. For, you know, um, for however long. Yeah. And that does... Well, a week, and then we'll be sick of each other. Do you want a cup of tea or anything? Uh, 
Yes, please. Would you, would you prefer, would you prefer uh, coffee, Dad? Yeah, coffee. I grew up in, in Africa and, and at the height of the um, HIV epidemic. Um, um, my dad passed away when I, was in a, when I was studying medicine in Australia, and I was away at the time, um, and he died of HIV AIDS. And so to get a phone call you're thousands of miles away, and, and you always go through things in your own mind. Is there something that I could have seen or done? You could have gone back to visit and things like that. It makes you realize how uh, short life can be in certain situations and, and trying to sort of make most of the time that you have with people because you don't know how things can change, really. I don't think I'd be a very good nurse just because I think I'd get too attached. Nurse to what? The, the patient. Ill people. Mm. I'd get too attached and I just... That would be really fucking heartbreaking. I would people love just having the company of younger they? people. They'd just love it. Even if it's like 10 minutes. Mm. Could you clean up someone's sick people? Oh, no. <laughs> like lumpy food sick. <laughs> Probably. If I was being paid for it, I probably would. Not like I wouldn't voluntarily go around cleaning up people's sick. I don't actually think I could do that. I could probably do wee, but that's, that's like my limit. Poo, definitely not. I can't even clean up my dog's, I don't my think... dog's poo. It's really interesting watching it. <laughs> that's nice. It's come together kind of well. Okay. Let's just trim, trim, trim a few of these so they don't look a bit nice. Looks like you've got an old man's beard at the moment. <laughs> Quite funny. You will have a story to tell for a few, <laughs> few years. All right? I can't remember the story. <laughs> That's shit. Hi, oh, like, do you know roughly how long he's going to be? Um, I'd say for a few hours. A few hours. So he's going to be all right when he wakes up, do you reckon? Well, we won't let him go until he is, so... OK. We weren't even at the party long enough for him to actually have a conversation with us. I really don't know him, but I wasn't going to let him be here on his own. Well, he looks so peaceful, doesn't he? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah? He's happy. No broken bones or anything? No, not that I can see. I sound a lot more concerned with his friends who refused to come with him in the ambulance. Really? Yeah, I met him about two hours ago, to be fair. Really? Yeah. And I've got work tomorrow. Yeah, go for it. So I'm yeah. thinking, go home. You? <laughs> and he will be all right when he wakes up, you think? Mm. You've done your good deed. Right. Mm. Oh, but you know he's not going to remember me being here either. either. Can we tell him that a nice person is? <laughs> Two nice people. Two nice people. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. Even in a hospital where you've got people around you all the time, obviously people are there to look after you, to watch over you, to make sure you're all right. You still want someone who knows you, someone who really, really cares, not because they have to, but because they actually do just love you. The surgeon actually told me, OK, that there was 25% chance that he could actually die during surgery, or there was a 75% chance he could die without surgery. That's when it actually hit me that, OK, I could actually lose my son. still amazing to see that he went through so much, but he still came out of it and, and is here happy how he is now. Not saying hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of him. Uh, even the doctors said they couldn't believe how quick he recovered, how well he was, how happy he was even in the hospital once he started getting better. 
can't believe my little baby went through so much and has come through the other end and is getting better. So your life's good. <laughs> you kind of take something positive away from that. Like you think, oh, we did a good thing. We worked well as a team and we did a good thing and, you know, maybe I didn't save a life so much, but maybe I did, don't know. Can you see things, Tino? When you get people who are disorientated, they're truly losing their grip on reality. I can see a map and a car saying happy birthday. Bailey's had an accident. He got knocked over. He just made me cry because he said he loved me. Oh, he loved her. Yep. Thank you.